Welcome to Cubebert meeting for my West Coasters. Good morning to everyone else. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from where you ever you are hailing from. Like everyone is rolling in. We'll give it just a few minutes. And of course, I'm going to go ahead and drop the meeting notes link in case you don't have it handy. While we're every waiting for everyone to roll in, please make sure and add yourself to the attendees. What helps us promote Coopert and how we are doing in the community. And if you're new on this meeting, uh, haven't been here before or haven't introduced yourself before, um, I would invite you to speak up and say hello, and we can welcome you. Hello, I'm, I'm not at Central today, so first time to the meeting. Fantastic. Um, anything specific bring you in today? Yes, we have a, under the agenda and uh, notes, we have a topic there uh, with the Get Out Back uh, link. Fantastic. And that is a great segue. If anyone has anything that they want to add to the agenda, please go ahead and do that. We'll give it just another minute or two for everyone to finish rolling in. And just a second here. Okay, so let's see, going ahead and kicking things off. Um, if you haven't added uh, what you need to to the agenda or to attendees, feel free to do that anytime throughout the meeting, and right. I will try to circle back. And otherwise, let's go ahead, um, kicking off with the first agenda note, or guests brought that to us. If you want to go ahead and introduce that, um, take the mic. Thank you very much. Um, basically, we're busy developing um, infrastructure for the CNCF where um, people can spin up clusters and, and underlying infrastructure to quickly contribute to open source. So we're doing several um, iterations of that. And one of the issues that we ran into when using KubeVert is um, it's quite elegantly explained there by Hippy. Um, and we got feedback from David. So it, it seems there is a solution that can be done. So we just want to check on is there anything that we can do um, to help move this forward or is um, would it be put in tri triage or how, how does stupid um, work with issues like this? So I guess my first question would be um, whether uh, like you have seen in the code where a PR would need code submitted or if you need help scoping that out, if you have anyone who would be up to the, the task of getting a PR started or if it's something that we need to triage and figure out where it could be put on the roadmap for someone else to develop. 
Uh, yeah, we haven't looked at the code because um, not really in, in involved in Qubit. So if we can get some pointers, either exactly where you want the code changed in which way, or otherwise, um, if it could be triaged and we can get some sort of an idea how high on the list would be of for things. Um, so that's some helpful context. Um, I don't have all the answers. If someone else on the call is able to speak up and kind of give some pointers. It's okay. I am willing to let the dead air be awkwardly long if we don't get any replies. I guess we are talking about the cluster API provider, right? The can pretend I understand the full context. Be uh, in the meeting, he raised the issue and just asked me to present. Uh, um, so there's quite okay. Um, you can look at the comment that he made there. Um, so the option um, is to use now kind of what what we're looking for. You're breaking up really bad over there. I'm sorry. Okay, let me try. Uh, so basically, the explanation by David Fossil. Um, that that's what. It seems to be that would solve our problem. So I'm not sure that was better, less breaking up. Um, Brian, I don't think any of us are very confident in what you were trying to say. Is there any way to maybe improve the, the audio? Or if you want to capture okay. your specific Is this task. because I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you might have um, uh, better luck if you turn your video off, plausibly. Let's try that. Is this better? So far, so good. All right. So basically, the um, the feedback that we got from David Fossil seems to be that that's the, the thing that we want to do. Um, so if there's somebody that can point us to where we, sh we should do it, or if we can get some feedback about we do triage and we can support in some way or, um, and whether you, it, this would be entertained as a possibility. I, I believe you can open a, a PR against the cluster API repository and it will be accepted um, basing that of the David's comment. So. I'm not exactly sure, um, but what I understand from David Vossel's uh, comment is that he is saying that we should probably um, change Cooper to allow an empty node cloud or config drive. But to be honest, I'm not an, not at all an expert in that matter. But what I'm what I'm seeing here is that there is something missing, like like no cloud or config drive volume, which is empty somehow. And I think that would be have have been done in somehow inside Kubert. But yeah, I don't know. Well, Kubert allows for us to switch between the two. Um, I, it just looks like that's not exposed at the Cappy layer. So 
So yeah, then just forget what I just said. I I was talking garbage. Usually that's my job, so um, I'll send you a bill for the uh, encroachment on my business. Okay. All right, cool. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right, so uh, sounds like the general recommendation is that like where um, this code comment or that's uh, linked in the comment is not a bad place to start and it sounds like uh, a PR to the Kubrick Cappy provider repo would be welcome um, and I'm guessing that um, any follow-up questions while developing that would be fantastic to bring to the um, Kubert cluster API um, or cluster API Kubert Slack channel. If you're still right. or otherwise working. Okay, so let's let's dig into it. See, yep. we'll see if we can find the right spot to 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 turn the knobs. Awesome. And uh, if we get stuck, we'll we'll get, get jump back in back. Awesome. Thanks for your time. And yeah, I would also, um, if you do run into any difficulties, I'd, I'd ping or email David Bustle. He would be the, the expert on the matter. David Russell. Sorry, uh, David Bustle, who's already commented. Cool. That'll be a fun one. Um, all right. So moving on, uh, let's see, okay. it looks like we have GVM support. If we want to hear about that. Yes, I would like to talk that uh, here's Andre from the desk. Uh, we postponed our release uh, because the GPU was not working. And we are partnered with our computing that they have developed uh, JVM. And you can see the video about to enable GPU support on Kubvert without the license server from NVIDIA. First, and second, they enable us to do live migration of the GPUs with the VM across the uh, nodes. This is the goal that we need to do uh, for ourselves. And later on, we're going to pu publish and pull uh, to Kubvert community uh, as part of our development. Uh, I'm just saying here, uh, any ideas how this must be, be made uh, are very welcome. Uh, we're probably going to push a PR uh, to Kubvert uh, when we have some code done already and something to show you guys. But the GVM uh, itself is a very good and stable solution so far. Uh, slicing the GPU uh, in a proper way without uh, NVIDIA license server and be able to expose from the host to the guest KVM VMs uh, uh, very smoothly. And they have it, uh, clients in production uh, but not over Kubvert. We are adding the Kubvert between the host and the guest uh, to be able to scale and scale big. And uh, if I understood it well, uh, this technology allows you to do uh, mediated devices and there is nothing which you need to change on the Kubvert side. So you can make uh, these PCI devices and the logic for uh, pass, passing through the PCI device is already implemented on the Kubert side. The only thing is not implemented is live migration. Migration is part of them code already, and we're going to integrate uh, that because they have a way, for instance, uh, that is different from uh, NVIDIA. They have two NICs, two, two GPU boards with 16 gigs. Each I can grab one gig from uh, one board 
and one gig for other uh, other board and put two gigs in a single VM. They are able to do that magic part. You understand? And with that, I haven't my migration uh, without uh, a broken the, the, the user uh, uh, usage for you understand. This is already by that is code. still offline migration. Uh, they can do offline and online migrations. You know, interesting, interesting. This is what they create, and there is a video I put here. You can see it uh, about the technology. Okay. Yeah, I saw that already. Very interesting. <laughs> we're gonna do this. This the code, and we're gonna contribute to the this as part of uh jobs okay 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 uh i just uh wanted to say that i think from the i haven't tested that yet but i'm i sure that this technology should already work haven't you tried that already uh we are trying but there is some missing parts <laughs> okay okay let's work together to to make it work Okay. Any further questions? I don't think so right now. All right, thank you for bringing that. And let's see. Um, we have an item noted by Ben Coxford. If you want to go ahead and speak to that. Uh, hi, yeah. So we've just um, started looking into Cuba um, and sort of whether we can sort of use it um, for a project. Uh, and there's sort of three things I've sort of raised. Um, so I think one of the first ones which I was mentioned last week was the hot plug next. Um, I know there was a design spec um, set up for that. I uh, just wanted to sort of get an idea of, sort of how that's going and if there is a time frame for that. Uh, so if anyone on the call could answer that, uh, but I may just create a discussion um, or if there is someone I could email about that to get an update. Um, but the other two options, um, other two things I mentioned was spice support. So I saw a re recent discussion um, about sort of supporting spice and wondered whether this was going to go ahead. Um, whether that is just exposing like the VM on a cluster IP service and the actual port. Um, I don't, not 100% sure how much work's involved in that. Um, but again, so if anyone needs to talk about answer, answer for that. I can say something. We was trying to use that a uh, long time ago. And I know that Red Hat has removed completely the, the effort to continue to develop SPICE protocol. And that's why we they remove from OKG, that is OpenShift open source, and now it is not part any anymore uh, about uh, of any of the efforts of, of Red Hat. But uh, if you are interested to add that back again, we are able to contribute and we want to, uh, we have that on our roadmap to remove RDP remote desktop uh, protocol and use SPICE instead. Uh, this is part of our plans already, but uh, it's a very hard work because not everything is working perfectly, especially it's not updated uh, completely for Windows 11. That is our goal uh, on day zero to offer our service. Uh, no, brilliant. And um, one thing I probably would say to that is as well, we are looking like we have set up RDP and we'd probably like to keep that support there. Um, instead of just you know removing RDP, and um, there is some other sort of edge cases for it. Um, so I think like 
the sort of free Navy and C or just VNC in general, RDP and Spice, and sort of allowing the sort of end user to be able to enable and configure them would be quite nice. Um, instead of you know just removing support for that, because I can probably guarantee someone out there will also say if we remove the RDP, um, someone might want to use it. Um, but yeah, I could I could just raise another discussion on that. Um, uh, please, extend... please send an email before we discuss that. I I can contribute not only personally but financial to make it happen. Okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's that's that one. Uh, and then the last one, um, I couldn't really find too much documentation about it. And um, there was a lot about updating um, and patching the control plane workloads. Um, but there is very little documentation about the upgrade process of the virtual machine instances and how that works in Um So yeah, I don't can you specify what do you mean by that? Do you mean the the weird launchers in the Kubernetes cluster, or do you mean the operating systems of your virtual? Um, so I understand with operating system, if we wanted to do that sort of thing, like if we wanted to give it another image, we'd have to bring down the VM to start it up again. Um, but I think it was more on the process of if we change, like if we wanted to add an interface, or we decided we want to adds a new hot plug volume and um, whether there's a way to do that without the the CTL tool and um, whether you know we could do it through a CRD to attach a new volume to a VM um, but also the upgrade process of how that works like do we live migrate a VM and um, into another pod I can contribute also on that matter uh the desk updates the guest operating system every week with patches and everything and this is completely automated over a ci pipeline uh, we didn't find any other way other than create a golden image every week uh, do you like bring bring the vm down and start back up again with the new image Yes, we find out that it's possible to do an offline update, <laughs> but doesn't work always. Has a lot of, of brokes. The best way we find so far is to clone uh, 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 clone uh, a golden image and always uh, update the golden image on a weekly basis for patches and everything, security issues. And we do it for Windows 10, Windows 11, Linux, Mac. You cannot imagine. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that makes sense. And yeah, definitely, like from like what we've done, we expect like you know, bring the VM down, start that again with a new image. That's that's fine. But I think for us, it's the hot plug volumes and interfaces. So how we actually you know can attach them to a VM whilst it's still running or you know live migrate it into another pod and attach those new new volumes or in spaces um, without you know actually having to bring the VM down uh, this is possible uh, on a version that I, I, I work with uh, Microsoft but is not supported <laughs> okay <laughs> cool no worries. Uh, um, Simple as that. Uh, okay, as that. <laughs> works, but it's not supported by Microsoft. Cool. Uh, yeah, no worries. That was uh, all, all my point. Thank you. All right, then. Moving on to open floor. Um, Looks like Andrew is reminding us about KubeCon EU and the CFP deadline for that. If anyone wants to speak or is considering writing a pos proposal or interested in having some review done on a proposal that you um, want us all to look at, um, happy to help provide 
constructive criticism and helpful feedback to um, get your PR in as good of a state as possible. Andrew, do you have anything to add? Nope, that that's, covers everything perfectly. Thank you. All right, good deal. Um, of course, that's going to be in Amsterdam. So if anyone wants an excuse to go to Amsterdam, sounds like a great opportunity. All right. And let's see, next we have separate section for API review. Do you want to speak to that? Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Alai. Um, I work along with um, Ryan Hellesi. Um, so there, we're, we work on um, uh, KubeWord and uh, we have to deal with uh, upgrading uh, production workloads. And sometimes we find that uh, APIs, as they evolve, uh, they can uh, lead to uh, breakages. So just curious if, um, if we can add a separate section for uh, reviewing the API changes um, just so we can prevent uh, backward compatibility break uh, breakages um, in this call uh, that I, I think that would be great. Um, what do folks think? I might not have paid as good of attention as I should. Can you um, describe again what specifically you're asking for feedback on? Sure. So um, there is a there is a bot that attach, attaches labels to every PR that comes in, uh, and a specific label that has API change uh, is attached to any PR that has. Uh, uh, that has API changes in it. So I was wondering, like, in order to make sure our V1 API as we evolve uh, remains uh, backward, um, uh, backward compatible as we upgrade, um, can we add a separate section to go through these PR changes and make sure uh, that, you know, the API change PR get the uh, attention and make sure that network compatibility uh, is maintained. So, so yeah. what is the ask? Uh, I, I guess, do uh, you want to be, um, or let me ask this way. Do you want to be specify on the list of the of the of the people who should review the the API changes, or or the question is or ask is different? No, I was wondering like how we have different sections in this uh, in this community call, right? Like, oh, can we okay. do a separate section and just go through uh, the the uh, the review in here, uh, just so you know. Um, can be we can give attention that is required for the API review PRs uh, and make so, sure that yeah so if if you have PRs that you're specifically interested in discussing or having extra eyes on um, you can drop the PRs that are interested uh, you're interested in having reviewed in the PRs that need attention uh, attention section and um, that would be a great time to call attention to PRs that you're specifically wanting to talk about. Sure. Does, so does, I, does that meet your need? No, I, I think actually I'm uh, asking if we, if we can do it the other way around. So what I'm asking for is if we can have um, people in the call review it, like do a triage review or something for API changed PRs in the call uh, that would really help in, you know, making sure that those changes are not breaking any uh, already existing upgrades or things like that. They are backward compatible changes, if that makes sense. Alay, Alay one suggestion, or I don't know if you're sharing, but you can share your screen and show a little bit 
like some examples of um, of these changes, and maybe we can, we can um, look at one of them, and maybe that would better demonstrate kind of what the ask is. Sure. Yes. I like the IG ally. <laughs> Oh, have I not been sharing my screen this whole time? Ha, huh. I thought I had shared my screen. I apologize for not following the normal convention today. Uh, give me just one second. My Zoom is requesting access to share the screen. So, so while Lay works on sharing, um, I get well, maybe like help. Um, I guess answer some of the questions. So, like our, our goal is, um, you know, we Qbert has a V1 release of its API, and it has a stable release. And the goal is to maintain the stability, to 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 not have any backwards incompatible changes that can merge, to to not change default behaviors. Um, or things like that, or if there are changes to any of those things, then we're aware of them, the community is aware of them, it's in the release notes, and, and it gets kind of blasted everywhere, it gets on the mailing list, whatever. Um, we, we want to call attention to those kinds of changes. So the, the ask is to, um, uh, the lay has a bot that identifies when these, when there are changes to be made as PRs that are affecting, or that could be affecting the API. The ask is to to look, do you spend a few minutes just looking at these um, in this column to see if there's um, a backwards incompatible change or that someone is is making and that we need to raise awareness of it? Uh, I'm not sure if this solution would scale. Um, but like currently, if you, uh, the responsibility lies on the approvers. So if there is a potential of breaking change, I guess the approver would need to spot it. And uh, these kind of changes should not be merged, of course. Um, does it make sense? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Ali. Yeah, uh, regarding the scale part. So um, I, I'm i not, um, this, this process is already established in uh, Kubernetes. So there is a working group called uh, SIG um, API review. Um, its responsibility is to make sure that all the API changes that come into Kubernetes are backward compatible and it does a periodic triage and uh, it has an entire process. But our community, for our community to make sure what process be works best, our thought was to start this kind of process here and you know identify those challenges and if it goes well eventually we might have something that scales better but this is just a starting point yeah uh, uh now i understand your ask uh so a note uh which is probably important is that uh, fabian deutsch is working on a way to scale our our approvers in the repository and what he's trying to suggest for the community is to have like SMEs, uh, so areas of, of domain knowledge uh, in which we would then, if we, in which the code would be split into and there could be people in these groups and review uh, the, code change, the code changes <clears throat> and there then we could have like possibly or we could take it as a as a sick groups right and have a possibly uh, dedicated meetings so, yes. so I believe... this, uh, this works works very much in conjunction with that proposal i went through that proposal and one of the uh, one of the group was api review and controllers uh, so i can see that as we get into habit of reviewing these changes, people who are involved in in, uh, in reviewing it here can easily be spun off in a separate call. But you know, just to get an idea of how the process work, uh, we were wondering if we can just get started with a separate section of that in this call, and then maybe 
if we need more time, uh, a, a separate group or a separate call can be arranged, um, you know, from from there. Does that, um, does that understand the ask better? Is this an opportunity to um, add a field to the pull request template where uh, a PR submitter can specifically call out whether there's um, a breaking API change or an API change that would require specific review? I am not sure because the, there, there was a bot that got broke a while back, but I've fixed it and it looks at the specific files which changes the API and automatically adds this label, okay. API change label. Okay. So we should be able to filter through all those PRs and see, yeah. automatically, you know, have it added to a section and maybe even go through a couple. So as an example, um, this PR right here is something that we looked at and we could, you know, discuss this here um, it, just as an example and, uh, you know, see how that process goes and um, follow it up with other PR reviews uh, in the next call. So if everyone's okay with it, I can probably walk through a couple of PRs from here. And then if that helps, if folks think that this is something we should do on a regular basis, we, we can, you know, uh, do that in the upcoming calls as well. So I guess my question as far as actually running the weekly meeting uh, would be trying to identify say if I looked at all of the PRs with this label, what would be an indicator for me to add one of uh, any of these PRs to the agenda notes rather than um, contributors bringing them up um, of their own initiative? Um, I think as I think this proposal suggests just going through this list as a triage and, uh, you know, spending few minutes on, on this rather than you had like identifying one or two and adding it to the agenda notes. Okay. Because anything that I see that's been like in the last two days, um, like those two are pretty obvious, add them to the PR review and, you know, we will see you know if there's engagement on the call for those but the the items that are you know old significantly older um there's no obvious trigger for me to add that to the agenda without somebody else uh, contributing that agenda item themselves yeah yeah and and i think people interested in making sure that api is backward compatible for example i can volunteer to go through these these prs and see or bring up uh potentially prs that are back breaking backward compatibility and add that to that list so i think we might have to do some um, pre uh, community call work to triage those or you know at least filter through this but uh, yeah, I, I don't think there is an easy solution for things like, oh, this is breaking backward compatibility until we have an end-to-end -end upgrade test, which which won't be immediate. Like it, we would have to get some work done to bring that in. Uh, we should already have a few of the tests, but uh, what I would uh, suggest is to bring this up bring this topic uh, into the mailing list uh, and why I think it is important to get all the approvers and maintainers on the one board so they will not uh, all, they will not merge anything and will wait for these reviews to happen. I'm not sure about the technicalities so I mean if we should go over them over the PRs here or in the dedicated meeting but I guess that's something we can uh, discuss in the mailing list. Does it sound good to you? That sounds good. Yeah, it sounds good to me, Ryan. What do you think? 
yeah yeah no let's start a discussion and let's um let's see where it goes okay. yeah i i had um a document which might uh have some some guideline of uh that that were largely taken from kubernetes abi review so I, I will add that and start a discussion on the mailing list uh, and uh if you have if you have encountered any breaking change uh or anybody else uh in their environment i guess that's uh just bring it up uh, i think breaking changes can be reverted and we can find a way to to make it right sure yeah i we did run into couple of changes uh, i will file issues for those and um, bring like add those in that mailing list um it just as an example so that would set the context for for the discussion that would be much appreciated thank you very much thank you sure. Just right. uh, to ask an ignorant question before we wrap up on that thread. Um, it, so there's five a, a kind API changes in that list that don't have a you know do not merge hold mark on them. Um, two of them from this week and the rest from you know the previous month. Once we've gone through all of those, will it be a matter of looking at the new ones or will we have to systematically keep returning to those older ones? you think so so you're saying uh how would the process work out for the reviews yeah so if we've looked at um that one you you pointed at um about i forgot what it was but um the uh, se linux level sure yeah yeah the hot plug disk container so if we if we review that let's just say we review that at the end of this meeting um, and we, we talk about it and, and whatever. In the subsequent meeting, when we look at this list again, if we're doing an, a, a kind API triage, will we need to talk to about that again? Or is that going to be a case by case basis? Or will we, will we only be triaging the um, new PRs that have come up that affect API change in, that, you know, in the, the week between meetings? Sure. So sense? I think yeah, I think that depends on on how the initial review went. So, for example, I could see two or three paths evolving. So, one of the paths is that we do, uh, you know, identify that this is indeed breaking backward compatibility. Then we might want to like add a label ourselves or something. That way, we know that if there is an update on that PR on the next triage, uh, we we can look at it more carefully. Uh, and make sure that that uh, that breaking change has been uh, resolved. Uh, if there are no change, like if everything looks good, if there are no breaking changes identified, uh, then I think it's good to go. We don't need to look at it again. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Um, is there, would that communication loop all be solved if we had a um a label specifically for bringing it to the community meeting attention because that would allow cool. us to help make sure that we call those things out yeah i think that's a good question but sometimes as contributors like i've had troubles in across various projects that it's not easy for a newcomer or mm -hmm somebody who is just joining to identify whether this is a backward but like breaking compatibility to breaking change or not so but a reviewer would plausibly be informed enough to know whether yes. that label should be added right so a, a, a reviewer could do that and we could watch for those labels yes but even even a reviewer is not prone to uh, well it could slip. So yeah, we can add that as a process, but I'm not sure if that will solve the problem. Okay. Um, maybe just something to include in the conversation then. Yeah. Right then. Um, thank you for bringing that up. I look forward to seeing how that goes on the mailing list. All right. So let's go ahead and... Andrew, it looks like... Um, 
maybe you're satisfied with the state of PRs right now. So we can skip to bug scrub. Seem to, yeah. And okay. thanks for everyone that, um, yeah, looks at those PRs and makes sure they're up to date with reviews. Awesome. All right. And on the mailing list, it looks like, let's see, we have call out for KubeCon CFP, of course. And let's see, it looks like this is active. So I don't need to worry about that idling. Um, let's see. It looks like this is being worked on. I almost wonder if the this schema publishing would be relevant to the API change conversation. Um, if you feel that it is, maybe go ahead and speak up in that thread. And otherwise, that looks like it gets us back to the last meeting. So we can jump into the bugs that we have here. Let's see. All right. Monitoring metrics. If namespace is default, I almost want to say we had something like this. Um, was it, it does seem related, maybe. Looks like this might be either an opportunity to investigate and identify if this is a bug or if it's a documentation issue. I guess, is there anyone able to take this issue on this call? don't have some activity on that we will have it um, stubbed next week to bring up as well All right. 
right, since that seems to be a recurring issue, we'll be sure to check back on that. And let's see, BMI auto migrate to another node when node is not ready. Um, so I know that a node is drank, can be drained specifically. Um, here, I guess our recommendation is that uh, admin or some automation needs to say that the node is gone. Uh, otherwise, we cannot really migrate. Um, or when your node is not healthy, I, I guess you cannot um, uh, cannot migrate the VMs. And the thing you can do is uh, like shut down or make sure that the VMIs on the node are shut down and spin them up on another node. Uh, so my, so my recommendation would be to look for a solution that would um, that would with certainty say that uh, the VMIs are not running on the node and then uh, these VMIs could be deleted from uh, Kubernetes cluster and Kubernetes should spin up a new ones on another node. Um, so I guess it would almost be an automated node drain controller is almost more... what it sounds like they're asking for. Yeah, I, I think that's um, this should not be as part of the Kubernetes, but there are solutions uh, yeah. that can achieve this. Um, see GPU path through only working after module is loaded I mean the PCI device should switch in regardless of what is in the guest Oh, okay, so video out isn't working. So that's an OS thing. Maybe for classification, can we, clarification, can we get a working Libur setup from them? Uh, a working what? A working setup. I guess there was mention that it's working. It's plain Libre to Kimo. So I would be interesting to see what's the 
Libbeard XML that is working for them. Libbeard, oh, I see. Not yeah, I see. Libbeard. I see. Yeah. Okay. And with that, um, I don't see anything new added to agenda items or open floor. We're also approaching time. So um, thank you all for joining and contributing to the call. I will see you same time, same place next week. Have a great rest of your day. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.